like three years ago, um, these videos you now see every day on Facebook and Instagram, um, it was pretty new to the world, um, because before that it's really hard to understand from a today's perspective, but at that time we didn't even have the data tariffs um, on our smartphones to watch videos outside of, of buildings all the time. But at that time it was, it was really new and we all saw these viral hits and videos with 100 million views and we thought, oh wow, that's really cool. How can you actually do that? Yeah? Um, how is that possible? And how can you really systematically create this kind of content? And how can you make sure that every single video you make is this viral hit? And then we said, okay, um, if you now make videos, you have to first understand what's the story you make, then you have to write a script, and then you have to make a production. And we found out, groundbreaking insight, if your story is shit, yeah, it really doesn't matter how good your script is, and it doesn't matter how good your production is, it keeps shit. Yeah? So it's, uh, my, my, teacher, my teacher in secondary school always said when I wanted to gamble for, or ask for another point on my, on my exam, he always said, Patrick, shit remains shit. And that's the same with, uh, with video production. So um, we said, okay, if the story is the really most interesting thing, then um, you have to understand what's the best stories. And we created this technology um, to really understand what are stories, um, which are and now a very important word, um, which are relatable. Yeah, so we said, okay, we don't want to understand what's the craziest stories out there, we don't understand what's the most emotional stories out there, because that's very hard to replicate. But what's very easy to replicate is relatable stories. So if we understand very nicely that waking up on a Monday morning is really terrible, yeah, that's a very, very easy insight. But also, we all know this interesting story, like every one of us has a grandma who is an excellent cook. Yeah, and we all know the story, hey, um, you're sitting there with your grandma, she has cooked like, you know, with a lot of fat, yeah, so it was really, like, uh, if, you, if you go there too often, you really grow in, in, in weight and, and, and all this. And then you have had all this big plate, and, and then um, your grandma says, oh, boy, do you want to have more? And then you say, oh, grandma, I have enough. But then she, she just puts another uh, spoon on your plate. So that's a story many people can relate to, and, and we thought, can we understand what are all these relatable stories, because there's thousands, and if we can really make sure to understand what's these stories, then we can build um, really, really nice videos on top of these insights. And that's, uh, in theory, I think it's a really nice story, um, but then we needed to prove that this is actually working, so we created this technology and went to publishers all over the world, and then we actually saw, and now the next slide uh, appears, um, that we can uh, actually um, achieve more than 1 billion video views per month. So we had more than a billion video views per month. At that time we were top, one of the top three video publishers on the planet. Um, and we were like creating content for MTV in over 50 countries, creating content for National Geographic, for Time and for Tony Nast in the US. And we really um, could prove that this nice story, what I just told you, uh, actually makes sense. And, um, and if you really make sure to understand what's these relatable stories, and then you build um, top really nice creation on top of these stories, on top of these audience insights, this can really work. And um, that's basically what we did in 2016. And um, at that time, like we started actually, we started in my living room, so took a, a really a romantic uh, startup story. Um, when we made these one million views, we had like 60 employees already, um, half a year later. And we made around 1,500 videos per month. So um, we made tried some videos and um, that was all really cool. Yeah, um, All the clients really liked us. We, we felt like really amazing because we were talking to MTV and everything. The problem is, with this, we didn't make so much money. Yeah? So that was really the problem of, of, this, of this thing. So we, we felt like, oh yeah, we're the kings of social media, um, but the problem is, when I looked at my pocket, um, it didn't really feel like this. So, um, so we thought, okay, wow, um, now we can make all these videos, and they all perform really well, but um, we're not making so much money. Um, what can we do? And, um, and basically, I would like to uh, um, explain to you why, why we didn't make so much money, because you might all think, wow, you made so many, so much reach, so many cool videos. Why is there no one giving you money? Uh, give money to these guys, but it was not happening. So, um, but the problem was basically, um, if you think of the business model of publishing or how media companies work, 
basically media companies they create amazing content and then they but they don't make money with creating amazing content they make money with putting shitty ads in between of the amazing content so that's basically um, of course it's a bit exaggerated but um, that's um, that's really how, 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 how media or publishing works. The problem now on Facebook is obviously, they still make the amazing content, Facebook still puts the shitty advertising in between, but the problem is that the publisher does not make money out of the advertising, right? And Facebook makes the money out of the advertising. It's super smart on Facebook actually, and it's um, that they made people put amazing content on their platform while they make all the money out of it. Yeah, it's crazy, but that's the problem all these publishers are face, facing these days, that they are just don't making money out of this. So, and we, our business model in the beginning was, okay, we charge the publishers, but we are, they are really like these poor dogs and, and, and almost dying, um, and, and then we want to make money out of them. So that obviously doesn't work. And um, then we thought, okay, maybe at some point of time Facebook will give us uh, money for this, because we put all this amazing content on their platform, also didn't happen. So, uh, so we were standing there and thought, okay, what's what's next? And, and then, then we thought, okay, maybe we could help the advertisers um, to make amazing advertising. Because, um, I mean, if the advertising is shitty, no one will buy their products and they will not get good media prices. So why don't we go to them and say, hey, we just have this ad and it has like maybe one million views. We all see these ads, but then they have 20 comments because everyone hates it. Um, why can't we turn this around and really make for you as, a, as an advertiser an amazing ad? Um, and then we went to them and in the beginning I said, hey, the advertiser, we have really cool videos with really cool reach. And then they all said, Patrick, with this bit, you're really not the first one walking into that door just this week. So that really didn't work. Um, but then I talked to the head of marketing of Porsche and he said, Patrick, and I listened to your pitch. Um, I think 95% is really, it's really boring because I hear the story all over again. But 5% is super interesting because what you say is that actually with your data driven process, you know upfront um, what works. Yeah. So if you know this upfront, why don't you guarantee this? Because there's one thing for sure, I've never ever seen a creative agency guaranteeing me anything. So if you say, your story is going to work and this will hit this engagement rate and you like give me the guarantee on this, for sure I will be your client. And then um, we basically said um, on the next slide, um, hey, the advertiser, um, we make a spot for you, get one million organic views, if not, you get the whole money back. So, and that was finally a story the advertisers really understood. And they said, oh wow, that's cool, so we are going to do it. So, so um, and, um, and then, so I basically thought about this a while and this amazing pitch, and I, I was like really pumped because like, I kind of said, oh Patrick, that's amazing. So then I walked back in the office and I told my team the story, and they were like, what the fuck, how are we going to do this? <laughs> um, but um, then we had to learn this. Um, we had to learn um, how we can not, um, like, predict and be like, oh yeah, this likely will work, but be 100% sure that this is going to work. And, um, and basically, we afterwards um, put together this process um, in order to make sure that this is actually working, and, and we made that, and last year, in, in 2017, we basically had clients, I don't know, Deutsche Telekom, Deutsche Bahn, Deutsche Bank, Deutsche Post, um, Edeka, Bayersdorf, Media Markt, um, all the top German brands, um, they basically signed up for this and made all these videos for us. We had in Germany, out of the top 50 commercials, 19 were made by us, and um, right now it's really 5 out of 10 um, in, in, in 2018. So we really cracked this, um, and, and that was really um, really cool to see. Um, um, let's, let's see what, what's on the, on the next slides. Um, Oh yeah, that, that's what I just said, okay, like this year, five out of, out of the top ten, um, so basically we rank this, but it's ranked according to interactions, so you see that the number one is actually made by us, so 345,000 interactions, it's something, I think if you take the accumulated interactions on all ads so that you ever had, it's more um, on, on, this, on this video. Um, so we made this Edeka spot, we made the other Zavencia spot, we made the Sportsbank spot, and we also made this uh, Neckermann uh, Tom's Cook spot. 
And um, on the next slide, um, yeah, you see a few, uh, few other um, companies we are working with. And then on the next slide, um, yeah, you can see that we are actually the fastest growing advertising agency in Germany. And on the next slide, um, <laughs> <laughs> on the next slide, you, you see, um, you see again um, how the how the process works, um, and, and that's basically. Um, I don't know if there's some uh, of you really interested in, in, in advertising, and that's maybe helpful. Um, if you're not really interested in advertising, uh, just um, very interested. The next two minutes are probably a bit too much deep, deep talk, but um, when it's okay. So basically, um, in order to understand how how can we actually um, pull this off, that we guarantee this and really give a money back guarantee. So really, know before the before you start the production. You guarantee the performance of a of a commercial. Um, so basically, first of all, we get the same creative briefing every single creative agency gets. Uh, it's the exact same thing. Then our first step is now different uh, because, as I said, we've created this technology in order to understand what are these relatable topics. So we call this audience insight. We want to understand for a specific target audience what's relatable for these guys. So and then we see, okay, there's like lots of relatable stories for this target audience. In which of these stories can we actually integrate the message um, our client wants to um, wants to get across? So we integrate this. So a lot of these audience inside are, are useless um, anymore because um, they, they don't fit to the message, but some really fit. And then in the next stage, we do um, a prototyping. And prototyping means um, we have written a script, we have found out about a really nice audience inside, we've written that script, and then our creatives actually go out and film this movie with their iPhones. So we really make an iPhone movie um, out of this script, um, this, this takes you one or two hours. So and then uh, we actually post this as a Facebook ad and, um, and target like the target audience of the client. So, and, and then we basically analyze the different KPIs this video has. And the thing is, if this here doesn't work at all, then it's really unlikely that this works if you make it look a bit nicer. If this works really, really nicely, um, and, and, and then uh, we basically go to the pitch and tell the client, hey, here's our three concepts. Um, the good thing is we have already filmed them, we have already tested them, and these are the results. Um, then the client uh, says, yeah, well, we had a pitch, we saw five creative agencies, and there was just one who could actually say, this concept has these numbers, this concept has these numbers, and actually guarantees that they actually uh, will, will reach these numbers. So it's very easy to win the pitch. Um, and, and then. Uh, basically, the only requirement for the production then you have is you go to a production agency and you give them the film and you tell them, please do this again, but it should look nice. And if possible, don't mess it up on the way there. Um, that works most of the time, um, but the only requirement on the production, it's not, on the production, there, there's not much value expected from us. It's just what we expect is don't destroy it. Um, so and just copy the video you've seen in a nice quality. And then you have you, you, you get this correction and you make another ID testing of different cuts and then you put it in the solution. And that's basically um, what, what, what we've uh, set up as a, as a process. And um, the thing is, with this, um, with these videos, um, I think, yeah, let's, let's watch two of them. Um, and then we, then we continue. So Randy, uh, Lena, this is um, an ad we made for Edeka, um, so German supermarket chain. I don't know if we have uh, actually torn. If not, um, it should also work without. Um, Thank <laughs> you. 
so um, that was the spot we, we, look, we put together for Edecamp. <laughs> so um, yeah, you, you, you could see, maybe you could see yourself in the video, maybe you could see some, some friends, girlfriends or so. Um, so it's, um, yeah, this got more than 60,000 um, interactions. It has a higher interaction rate than the, their famous um, Christmas spots, actually. Um, and as you can imagine, the investment for this one was probably a tenth, if, if, if even a tenth, um, of the investment they put on the, uh, on the Christmas spots. But the results are actually better. Um, so that was one spot, and now the second spot I'm going to show you um, shows you actually that it can be also very different. Um, this is something we put together for DHL um, to introduce their street scooter uh, electric uh, delivery van. Um, so this was uh, even in English. Um, This was the, the, um, the clip we put together for DHS. Um, and the thing is, with this, you see, it's not funny at all. Yeah? Um, it, it's really, um, it really shows you, you, you have to tell a story which appeals to, to, to the users, but it doesn't have to be crazy. Yeah? Um, the thing which worked really nicely on this um, spot was really um, that, or like the, the best performing uh, sentence we had in this swap was this, uh, this part when we were talking about hey, there's no one else right now building this, so um, DHL had to build it on, on its own. And why did this work really well? When we posted this video, it was right in the, in the middle of this uh, huge scandals with German car builders. So you had these huge scandals because of like the um, diesel gain and whatever. But you also had that they are actually not doing enough for um, for electric cars. So um, so this played in very nicely in, in this um, in this um, situation in, in, in the press and, and, and the situation where many people actually have this opinion. And because of that, we got a lot of interactions where people said, oh, "Wow, yeah, it's so cool that DHL is doing it, and it's a shame that the German car manufacturers are not doing it." So really putting in this sentence uh, changed the whole thing. And to get this. Um, going, I think we made around 30 different versions of this uh, film, and that was the, the winning one. Um, and um, and it's really, it's it's a lot of testing. Yeah? You you put it together, you test a lot of things, and then you see that this uh, eventually works. Um, I think, um, yeah. So so these were um, a couple of spots. Um, this was all basically focused on engagement. Um, but the thing is, that that was just the story of 2017. Yeah. Um, so um, obviously in 2016 we said, okay, we want to do like really crazy videos for all these publishers, for MTV, etc. Last year we said, okay, we want to make all these viral hits for all these brands. So now you're wondering, obviously, um, like what's the story of 2018? So in this uh, year we actually said, um, like for such a film we get between 70 and 80,000 euros. Um, so it's um, I think it's for a startup. If you come from the living room, it's 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 good, yeah. Um, but if you want to now become like a really big advertising company, it's it's obviously uh, not not enough because you need to make a lot of films to uh, to to get there. So basically, um, like I went to our clients and said, hey, um, could have been doing this, um, but. Um, from now on, I don't want to have 70,000, I would like to have 700,000. So, um, can we change the model? So, and, and then they said, Patrick, um, hmm, um, the thing is, you know, uh, we really like your videos, um, 
like um, it's super cool what you're doing, and like we always have these special projects to give you 70k, but like 700k, it's just it's it's not lying around, yeah. The 70 80k they are lying around, so we can pick it up and get, give it to you. It's perfect. But 700, it's not lying around. For 700, um, actually, what we need to do is we need to see that you, as a marketing channel, achieve certain metrics, certain KPIs, which are better than other channels, because we have booked all the money in, all the budget in, and, uh, and basically, if you can show us that on an important metric you're overperforming um, our other channel. It's very easy for us to get you the 700k. You even get the 7 million k because, like these guys, like in Edeka, they make 40 billion a year. So what are we talking about? 70k. So it's like when, when I spend three euros on a beer. Um, so it's 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 like really, um, guys, the money is there. Just give it to us. So um, so um, yeah, we, we then said okay. Um, but if it's so easy, why didn't we have this conversation one year ago? Just let us know what's the key guy. So I mean, you can hit that. And then for Edeka, for example, is then the KPI, okay, how many people actually walk into that supermarket? Um, the thing is, to track from a Facebook video how many people walked into that supermarket because they saw two weeks ago, um, somewhere on the Instagram feed, this video, th that's a tough one. Um, but we actually saw that um, there's other clients which much, where it's much easier. Especially uh, companies who operate online and sell stuff online. And they are all very clear about this. They say, Patrick, we have this customer acquisition cost, $100. If you get us clients for $100, you can have all your money, all our money. You can, you, can, you can make 10 million a month. It doesn't matter at all. Yeah? That's the customer acquisition cost we're optimizing for. There's other companies, they say, hey, uh, we actually, if you can get us traffic um, with a nice duration, so people who spend one minute on our site, like that's the metric we're tracking for. So if you can give us this cheaper than our other channels, you can have all the budget, it's not a problem. So then we said, hey guys, why didn't you tell us this earlier? So let's stop doing engaging videos, let's make videos which in these KPIs you actually want to hit. So, um, so then we basically changed that, and, um, and then we saw um, this actually works. Um, so we basically said, dear company, um, tell us your customer acquisition cost, um, so if that's one of us or what, we make all the production, all the videos on our own, um, on our own account. You don't have to spend a single euro on this. We do all the media buying on our own. Um, so we take the full risk um, to just show you that we can actually hit this customer business cost. And if we do, um, we get all your budget. That's basically the deal. So it's very simple. And um, and then we, 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 we now tried this in the last four months. Um, we have. We have clients, and I can tell you, like, one year ago, I was negotiating with brands um, for, like, engaging videos. I had to fly somewhere three times to talk about Decision Maker 1, Decision Maker 2, Decision Maker 3, then the other guy I wanted to talk to next month, fly again there. I had to, for 30K, I had to fly there three times. Now, if you have, like, a model where you actually uh, um, get to real performance, um, you get 200, 300K over a gin tonic. It's, it's, it's really how it works, um, because it's an honest model, and, and that was really something I think we realized this year, that, um, that um, I, I was really surprised um, how, how, how advertising works in the end, because everyone is, is really bullshitting their way around and talking about, oh yeah, you can get a lot of likes, oh yeah, you can get a lot of brand awareness, oh yeah, you can get a lot of uh, whatever. In the end, it doesn't matter. In the end, you need to prove for this company that you get them more clients. If you get them more clients, you get a lot of money. If not, not. But we can really save um, our breath and uh, not and not going to all these bullshit KPIs um, because that's in the end what matters. Everything you do in marketing uh, has to translate into your business at some point of time. No one in business is there to just make funny videos. It's just how it is. Um, the, the truth is out there that many marketing managers actually don't know that. Um, it's, it's really, some, some people come to us and say, hey, Patrick, we want to have this video, one million views, and it should be really engaging. And you ask them, why do you want to have that? And they say, yeah, because we want to sell more computers. And you're like, okay, but if I want to sell more computers, that would be the last thing I would do on the planet. I would rather send five interns on the street 
to try to convince someone by a computer, it would be much the, the money would be spent much wiser. So, um, so and I think that's really um, what what we have learned uh, just uh, this year. Um, it's, it's it's not a groundbreaking insight, but it's still if you look at how advertising works and if you look at how um, how agencies charge, um, then uh, then it's really still still how it is. Um, but the thing is, like I think we see that. Um, if you want to be a really big advertising company in the future, if you want to be still around in two to three years, there's no way you get around performance. In some years, everything you do will be performance marketing. It's not everything you will do um, will, will directly translate on this day into a performance. That's for sure. You will always do like videos which create a really good positioning. You will always do the videos which create actually awareness. But you will not do something where you have no clue that this translates at some point of time into a real business performance because that's what everyone's looking for. And mm -hmm. and the other thing is just it's it's very nice that we do funny videos, but no one cares about that. So and um, yeah, and, and that's basically um, I think what we're doing at the moment. Um, so we we are acquiring lots of uh, customers. There's actually right now uh, I just said this today again. Um, it's so like our. Who, who of you like uh, is, is running their own company? So there's lots of people. So um, if I go to you and I say, "Hey, what's your customer business cost?" and you tell me, "What's your company? What are you doing?" Hostel. Hostel. You, you do hostel. So um, what what do you have to spend if I want to if I want to stay at your hostel for night? Oh, it's a really high class hostel. It costs uh, thirty euros. Thirty euros. Yes. So um, if I get you like um, a new customer for twenty, would you say yes? A new customer? Yeah, someone. If yeah, I, the, the, like if 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 she she's looking for a place, if you give me twenty, she's coming to your place. Would you do that? I would. I would try to get a one for thirty. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 if you if you didn't meet her, like would you uh, would you take my offer to make ten years? Oh, of but yes, sure. There's always there's always room for. Yeah. So, but I, I'm I'm very nice, so I, I give her to you for ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you get the other. It will not better if I now say just for the night, <laughs> <laughs> just for staying in your at your house. Um, so, um, so if I say to you, hey, for ten you get a lot of clients, and, and I would say, hey, you can have, I, I book your whole hostel, and you just pay me ten, you would say, Patrick, that's good. Um, oh, that's very better with Porsche because they have such a wide margin. But for our hostel, I mean, oh, five that is really, five? really low. <laughs> <laughs> but for five, would you would you accept if I say uh, I want to like to rent out your whole hostel? Yeah, actually, um, we really have a um, program that like spending for for the last five percent that are not booked to give them away for free just to fill the house. Okay. So we have advertising with that and, and to have a nice incentive. But, but would you would you um, agree if I said hey I would like to book the whole October and and you just pay me five dollars per guest for you yeah oh yes that's five that's good so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're good yeah. um, so five, five is good um, so the thing is now I agree to make a lot of videos actually in fact we make twenty to thirty videos per week per client. And I pay it. Yeah? You don't have to pay anything. I also book it on Facebook and Instagram. You just give me five per customer which arrives at your door. So um, that's basically the deal I'm doing with the clients. And now the problem is really, um, and I'm really excited to hear what you're saying. But now, if you do this in Germany, like you talk to these people and you make you offer them this deal. And let's be honest, that, like the. Uh, it's 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 such a no-brainer. There, there can't be a bigger no-brainer. So basically, you say, hey, I want to I want to give you money. Um, do you want to take it? So, but if you do this in Germany, then the first person says, oh yeah, that sounds very interesting. Um, oh, I need to see whether we have still a budget. <laughs> and I'm like, eh? for for what a budget? Like I'm giving you money. <laughs> like, why, why don't you just take it? And then, no, you know, uh, we have to see you with the budget, and then, yeah, I have to talk to this guy, and then, oh, can you actually come to us? And I say, yeah, for sure, I can come to us. 
ah, yeah, okay, so let's make a meeting maybe on the 20th of September. And you're like, wow, what's, what's, what's wrong? And, and, and that's what you, what you see in Germany. Um, now, we switch to the US. Um, so actually, um, there's a couple of, uh, our, our interns are actually here uh, today. So, so what they're doing at, at the moment, they're basically reaching out on LinkedIn to um, US companies and saying, hey, um, what, what, what's, what's the sentence again? I think the sentence is, have you already heard about Storio? Um, we are, all, even though we are German, we heard for clients like Casper and Audible and get them 100 plus uh, new clients per day on a fully CIC base. Is that interesting to you? What's happening now in the US, this person, the CEO, reads this and texts back, hey Patrick, here's my number, just give me a call. You give them a call, they, they, they take the call and say, hey Patrick, um, yeah, please explain to me again, I think I already got it, but please explain again. You explain them for three, four minutes, and they say, wow, this really ticks all boxes, that's amazing. So when can we start? You say, no, you can basically start tomorrow. And then I say, okay, wonderful, I get this person to send you all the products, so you can you make the, the movies, and we get started, okay? Wonderful. Two hours later, you get the, the FedEx uh, code that it has actually been sent. One day later, because they send it like with Crazy Express, it's there, and they want you to get started. That's the difference between Germany and the US. <laughs> I, 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 never, I never thought that this is actually a thing, because I always thought, no, no we're German, like, yeah, maybe we're a bit more conservative, but you're also very fast, we're smart and everything. But it's really, it's so different, and, um, and, and that's, that's really a crazy learning. So right now we're just talking to US uh, companies um, anymore, because it's just, you lose so much time, um, and, and it's just, it, it's, it's crazy to see um, that people don't, sometimes don't even understand the opportunities, and, and I think that sometimes um, also really uh, helpful and, and also make me think a little bit about like how opportunities get into your organization, and if they walk into the wrong door, you actually, they never, they never become a reality. And sometimes there's really cool opportunities out there. You might get a lot of emails and, hey, Patrick, do you want to catch up? Do you want to have coffee? I'm going to talk about this, this, this. Hey, I can do this, this, this. And you always feel like, oh, what the fuck, the 110th email like this. Uh, but actually, there might be really cool opportunities out there. Um, and you just close the door. And then I think um, in, the, in the US, um, um, people don't close their doors. Um, it's really, they're, they're much more open to, to new things and new models because obviously like what we're doing is not a typical standard agency model. And, and in fact, we're even, we're even owning our creatives. So because we're not selling them, so we have our own movies, we do our own media budget, we just sell a performance. We're, we're not an agency, but since it seems like an agency and no one in Germany has seen a company like this, everyone is like, hmm, let's see. And, um, and yeah, and that's basically um, uh, another learning we, we are making right now. And um, yeah, I think um, that's basically what I wanted to talk about. Um, so I hope um, it was a little bit interesting. If not, uh, as I said, there's a lot of beer. Um, <laughs> so uh, to really save the evening. Um, but, um, yeah, I would say thanks a lot for um, for listening. Um, and if you now have questions, I'm uh, still there to answer questions. But thanks a lot. <laughs>